let's talk about the normal distribution and calculations with the normal distribution and in particular the standard normal distribution. Being able to do probability calculations with that particular distribution is such an important tool for you. So many things are based on it that if you don't have that down to a T you will be in trouble left, right and in the center. So let's talk about the standard normal distribution. Let me sketch one here for you, okay, and I hope you'll try to sketch some as well in your time as an advanced stats student. Okay, so this is approximately what the PDF looks like, the probability density function for a standard normal. So let's call that Z. We usually label the standard normal with Z, doesn't have to be. And so Z is normally distributed and zero mean and variance one. And that's what makes it the standard normal distribution, these particular parameter values. So the mean is zero. So that's around here. And the standard deviation is, is one. You will very soon learn that this means that if we go, it will look approximately like this, but it's not important that you get that exactly right. right? So approximately 5% of the probabilities of the area underneath the PDF will be to the left and right of this. Okay, 2.5% each. We'll get to that in a moment. So that's the PDF. Let's look at the CDF. So the CDF works on the same scale. We know uh, for the CDF, it's actually useful to use a vertical axis. So CDF will have a vertical axis here as well, of course. And we know the CDF will be between zero and one. Okay, so let me actually draw a little bit of a dotted line here where the value one is. Now, since Z is defined from negative infinity to positive infinity, what this means is that the CDF will never actually hit zero and it will never actually hit one, but it will just asymptote to, to this. What we do know is that at the value of zero, we have 50% of the probability here on that left hand side. That means one value for the CDF we know is this one here at zero, that will be 0 0.5. And roughly it will look like this. It will come from very close to zero and it will sort of go up here and then it will get flatter and flatter until it sort of asymptotes to one. So it will look something like this. This is the CDF of the standard normal distribution. So we already said, you know from the PDF that the area underneath the curve underneath the PDF describes a probability. So we said this one here was 0 0.5. There's a 50% probability that if you are dealing with a standard normal distribution, a draw is negative. And that translated, that 0 0.5 translated into this value here on the CDF. Okay, at a value of zero, there's a 50% probability that the value is up to, it takes the value up to zero. So at this value here, approximately, let me use a different color. Okay, that's at, at around two, to be precise, actually at 1.96, let's do it like this. Let's think about the size of the area up here. Okay, so that is close to one, but not exactly one. Okay, so at a value of, let's say 1.96. How high is that value here? So it's close to one, but not one. It turns out, and I know that by heart, and you will know that by heart at the end of the course, that this is going to be at 0.975. Okay, so this is the red area has the size 0.975 and that tr translates to this value on the CDF. So 
you of course don't need to know all of these values by heart. I'll show you how to work with a table in a moment. And in a later uh, section, we'll also show you how to use Excel to calculate such probabilities. So let's move on. Here we have normal distributions, four of them. In fact, they are all standard normal distributions. Okay, so, um, but they're labeled here as, as x. So here, x is actually equal to a standard normal distribution, and that is distributed. So that's the wiggly line as a standard normal distribution. That's what all of these uh, PDFs represent. So we are having in each of these four uh, PDFs, we have a red highlighted area and we got to match them to these probabilities. So the important thing is here to look at these at these signs. OK, so look, for instance, this probability, the probability that set is small or equal to negative 0.4. So we are thinking of a particular value and then the area to the left of that value. Now, this corresponds to this graph C. OK. So we are having everything up to a certain value highlighted. And all point, negative 0 0.4 will be here. OK, so that is the red area in, the, in graph C. So what about the next one? So here, probability that set is larger or equal than a certain value. So here, we should be expecting a highlighted area to the right of a certain point. And where do we have that? We have that here in this graph. To the right of a certain point, the area is highlighted. So that is going to be 0 0.67. So that probability corresponds to the red area in picture A. What about this one here? So here we want something to be larger than 1.96. So here's that number again, 1.96. But what we are asking for is the absolute value of set to be larger or equal to 1.96. So that is equivalent to the probability of set being larger or equal to 1.96 or the probability of set being small or equal to 1.96. Because let's say, for instance, let's think about a value here set being equal, sorry, smaller than negative 1.96. So think about one of the values that would fit into this one here. That would be negative 2. That is smaller than 1.96. So negative 2, the absolute value of negative 2, remember we're having an absolute value here, is indeed larger than 1.96. So which of these two remaining graphs, so we have A and C already covered, which of these remaining graphs uh, fits this bill? Well, we're thinking of extreme values of set larger than 1.96 or smaller or equal than negative 1.96. So that's going to be equivalent to these red areas here. Okay, so that is picture D. And then lastly, of course, there's only one left, but let's hope it uh, it fits. And what should well, we have a typo here? This one here should be smaller or equal than 1.85. So here we are having a probability that Z takes a value between two values, 0 0.2 and 1.85. And that corresponds to this one here, 0.2 and 1.85. And we want the probability that set is between here, that is that this red highlighted area. Okay, so that this is the area T. Now, in here, we haven't really calculated yet what these probabilities are. We'll do that on the very next screen, but these are sort of the four type of probabilities you may be interested in. A smaller or equal than, a larger or equal than, a the absolute value of set is larger than something, 
and then an any sort of interval. Right? These are the four different types of probabilities we may be talking about. So let's move on to the next slide. I need to scale this down just a little bit. Okay. So what we have here in this picture is the same four pictures we saw we saw before. And we have a standard normal table, which you also have available. And I will now show you how we can use this table to calculate the size of these probabilities, because that we didn't actually do in the previous picture. OK, so let's start with a particular reason. We start with with C. Okay? So this is the first one we're going to start with. And that was the probability. that was my pen here yeah. the probability that z is smaller or equal to negative 0 0.4 okay that value here was negative 0 0.4 now the reason why we start calculating this is because that standard normal table which you're being given and which you can find in every sort of statistical textbook gives you exactly this type of probability. Now I'll have to, so remember that that value negative 0.4, this is now important. I'm going to just scale up a little bit. So you can see here in that table, so hopefully you can, you can see that here and I'm going to use a highlighter here, a yellow highlighter, that you can see Z values here, negative from negative three all the way to positive three. And here's, for instance, let's find the value we need, negative 0 0.4. Then you're having extra values here in the top, digits from zero to nine, these are the second digits behind the decimal place. So if we were interested in, for instance, negative 0.45, we would have to go to negative 0.4 and then 5. And we would find this value here. OK, that's if we were interested in the value, the probability being smaller or equal than negative 0.45. However, we are now interested in the probability of z being smaller or equal to negative 0 0.40, that means we're going into this column here. Right? So it's that value here. So that value here gives us exactly the probability we are looking after. The size of that red area, that is now 0 0.3446, 0 0.3446. We read that from that table from negative 0.4 and the second digit is also a zero. So with that under the belt, we know immediately that this probability here is 0.3446. Question solved. So that was the easy bit, and it was the easy bit because the type of probabilities you find in that table are exactly these type of probabilities, and you can see that up here. Probability that Z is smaller or smaller or equal. You know that for a continuous distribution, that does not make a difference. A certain value. Okay, so that is what you find in here. So now we need a different type of probability. Let me zoom out a bit again so we can look at all of our all of our probabilities. So let's think about which one we're going to look at now. Let's look at probability A. Okay? So what we now want here, what we are after is the probability that Z is larger than 
0.67. So this value here is 0.67. Now we're interested in this probability. So what would happen if we go in this table, at this table, so let's zoom in a bit, bit 0.67 is sort of a value of interest here for us. What would we get if in this table we find that value 0 0.6 and then we want 7 as the second digit so we go down here we get this value 0 0.7486 so let me write that value down 0 0.7486 zoom out a bit so we can get our picture 0.7486. Now, what is that probability? Is that the size of this area? Turns out it is not. It is not the size of that area. What it is, is the size of this area, the area to the left of that point. So that area here, which I highlight here. It's the size of this area. So let me just write that down, 0.7486. So that is not the same as the probability that that is larger than 0.67, but we are in luck because we know what the size of the entire area is. The size of the entire area is one. That means the probability, the red probability, is equal to 1 minus that probability which we read off the table, 0.7486. So in other words, the probability that set is larger than 0.67 is the same as 1 minus the probability that set is smaller or equal to 0.67. And that probability we can read from the table, that was the green probability we read off the table, which we found to be 0 0.7486. So now you've learned how to calculate probabilities of the type small or equal, then that was the example C. You have learned how to calculate probabilities of the type larger or larger or equal than something. Remember the equal doesn't make a difference for a continuous distribution. So what's next? Let's go to example B. So example B, what we are after here is the probability that our value set is between 0 0.2 and 1.85. So this is the probability we are after. So this seems to be a little bit more, we need to think a little bit more. How do we get this probability from the table? Let me I'll move this table and I will just I'll move down to leave the table here. We'll have to work across here. So now before you go to the table, you need to understand how we will be using the table because we need to deconstruct this probability into probabilities of the type smaller or equal then, because only those we can read off the table. So we want that red area. Now think about the red area is going to be this plaque area, the area with the plaque line around. Uh, approximately, because that is going to be the probability that said is smaller or equal to 1.85 minus, let me use the magic of colors, let me use green, minus the size of this area. And that is the probability that said is smaller or equal to 0 0.2. Just check. 
but I'm not hiding anything here. Yeah, okay. And now that means we have deconstructed that red area into probabilities of the type which we can actually read off the table. So what we now need is these two values. Probability that set is smaller or equal to 0 0.2 and the probability of set is smaller or equal to 1.85. So let's start with set smaller or equal 0 0.2. We'll I'll zoom in a bit. 0 0.2. So we're here. 0 0.2. 0 0.2 and we want the zero. Okay, so that's 0 0.5793. Let's write that down. This is so minus 0 0.578. No, sorry, 93. And what about that black probability? Set smaller equal to 1.85. 1.85. So we're going to our our table. We have here 1.8, but then we want 8.5. So we need to look at this value here. 0 0.9678. 0.9678. Eight. So the probability of that red area is going to be the difference between these two numbers. I'll leave you to calculate what that difference actually is. So that only leaves us with one problem here, problem D. That was the probability that said but the absolute value of set is larger than 1.96. So you may say, well, that's pretty easy. We can uh, deconstruct that into that left tail probability because that is the probability that set is smaller or equal to negative 1.96. And then plus a second probability, that's the probability here to the right, the probability that set is larger or equal to 1.96. Now, larger or equal, we can't read that off the table, but we solved that problem here in A. That probability that something is larger or equal to something is the same as 1 minus the probability that set is smaller or equal than that same thing. So that is going to be the same as that probability will stay the same, negative 1.96, and then plus 1 minus the probability that set is smaller or equal to 1.96. Okay, so now we've deconstructed this probability here into probabilities which are only of the type which we can directly read of the table. So let's do that. Probability that set is smaller or equal to negative 1.96. Now you may at the end of this course remember what that is by heart. It is 0 0.025 but let's see, let's confirm this. So here's our table. Negative 1.96. Negative 1.9 we are here. And 6 is here, so we go all the way across here to 0 0.0250. So that's the first probability we have for our problem. That is 0 0.025, 2.5%. So plus 1 minus, now the probability that set is smaller or equal to 1.96. So that's zoom in a little bit. Here we have 1.9 and then we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, so that is 0 0.975. We can go back to our problem. Let's 
and that is 0 0.975. So what we get is that is equal to 0 0.025 plus 1 minus 0 0.975 is 0 0.025. So you see these two values are actually the same. The probability in here is 0 0.025, 2.5%, and in here it's 0 0.025, 2.5%. And that's of course a feature of the normal distribution that it is symmetric. Okay, and if you are dealing with the standard normal distribution, it's symmetric. They are always symmetric around the mean. The mean of the standard normal distribution is zero. Recall that mean here is zero. So that means the probability that z is smaller than 1.96 is the same as the probability that z is larger than 1.96. Each of them are 2.5%, so altogether we get 5% in the tail. Okay, so I hope that gives you an idea of how we use this standard normal table to calculate probabilities for a normal distribution. And it's very important that you know how to deconstruct any type of probability larger than in an interval, absolute value larger than into probabilities which you can read off the table, i.e. probabilities of the type smaller or equal than something.